What's happening, party people? Yeah, it's been a couple of days. Mm, mm, mm. You know, hate to say it, but it, it's just not worth making daily videos with the way YouTube is, uh, not getting the views, people saying they're not being suggested views. It may be good to check your settings, make sure you're on notification. A bunch of people are on notification, but... Hey, sometimes you just don't get them, and I don't know what it is, but views are still way down. So, then I got people that still not hitting the thumbs up button, like button. And when I watch one of my uh, content creators that I like, as soon as the video starts, I hit the like button. They have to do something kind of weird, whacked out, or crazy for me to unlike it. But most of the time, I just hit that, get that out of the way. So, he's got that like. It helps the algorithm make a comment a lot of times. So the videos are suggested and he gets probably more views for that. That's where it's supposed to work anyway. So if you're here, hit the like button and leave a comment if you can. And that'll help the algorithm make this worthwhile. Other than that, I may end up resorting to one a week. And just do kind of like a highlight reels and do daily stuff over on Patreon. So that's what I'm kind of thinking I'm doing. Um, still didn't get a lot of support on the uh, t-shirt printer I want to get. I had a guy that's going to donate a press for us. That's going to help. But as far as the funds that I need to purchase that thing, man, I, I still don't think I'm at 10%. Maybe at 10 percent so if i did the little bar graph uh that would be probably at 10 or 11 percent and i don't even know if we're taking time to do that if you want to help me out with that thing and you haven't done so already go ahead send a donation 5 10 15 20 bucks 20 bucks will probably be a good point that way i don't need so many people to do it but if everybody sent five bucks hey uh I, that would probably help but at where I'm at, the views I'm getting average around 450, almost 475. Everybody have to send about 12, 15 bucks in order for me to raise enough money just to buy the printer. I uh, appreciate all the people that's helped. I, a buddy of mine in Las Vegas area sent some money to help. Man, he sent five times what I asked. I asked for 20, he sent 100. So I really appreciate that support. A few people did that, and that takes up the slack for the people that either can or won't do it. So, uh, that's good. So, if you don't see videos coming daily in the future, you might have to pop over to that Patreon site. They will not be set up where you have to pay, but if you want to watch them, that's what it'll be. It's maybe not worth my time to keep posting the videos here on YouTube open. So, as for I'm at, I have acquired a couple of extra tools and going through our storage we found a bunch of stuff going through the garage and i had a guy stop by yesterday or the day before it was yesterday to clear his service light the light comes on when you start the car it says service 96 through 98 that light stays on two minutes you need a special tool to clear it well, I have this special tool, and I don't use it that often. I don't want to sell it because then that's one person that has it. So I decided to set up on my website where I do loaner tools. I'm going to put that on there. It's already on there. I'm going to put a rear main seal tool on there for those that are pulling their engines and wanting to replace the rear main seal. I got a extra rear main seal tool which means that i could loan this one out and if it doesn't come back it doesn't disable me uh, i can't be disabled by people not returning stuff that they say they will return so if you want it you post up the money i will also print you a return shipping label to get it back to me so you get the tool you use it you drop it right back in the box man you could return it same day like for instance this tool to reset the service light or SRS airbag lights. That thing works in less than 30 seconds. You plug that into your OBD2 port. You turn the ignition on. 
you select your vehicle, you select OK to clear the light, and it clears the light. I don't know if it took 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And you could drop that thing back in the box, give it back to the postman. Heck, the postman might wait for it. Uh, if you're at a post office situation, you don't even have to leave a parking lot. You go out there, you clear your code, you put it back in the box, put a piece of tape on it, return it to me. Or you use it one day, return it the next. Anyway, it will have a return label in there. I'm not asking for any money to use it, but I'm asking you to pay postage there, pay postage back. So you're probably looking at spending 15 or 20 bucks to use the tool. If you go to the website, you'll see it there. You can purchase it with the understanding that I'm going to refund your money minus the shipping. And if you want to give me a few bucks on top of that, you fill that out in a box on my website. When you're checking out, it says tips. If you don't want to process through the website, just mail me a check, money order, use Zelle, use PayPal, whatever. But, you know, going through my website, those payments come through PayPal some kind of way. So use a debit card or your PayPal account, something like that. But if you don't want to do that card situation, you can figure out another way. Send me the money. I'll print you a return label. You return it in the box. You get it in. You get to use the tool for free if you'd like. So that's that. Rear main seal tool so far and a tool to reset your airbag or service light. So. Getting back to John in the morning. Kind of got rained out today. It rained half a day here. I'm going to try to get there early in the morning tomorrow because it's supposed to rain some tomorrow. Maybe we'll miss it. I don't know. But if it starts pouring down raining, we'll have to shed it down. And yeah, hopefully get some more stuff done on his swap tomorrow. So as for I'm at, if you make any questions, post them. If anybody need me to pick up any parts out of Junkyards and stuff, man, it's getting tough. I've had to drive to Louisville twice in the last seven, eight days to get parts for people. Uh, there's just no P80s close to me anymore. Uh, my Cincinnati salvage yard is out, and I can't pull parts off my cars to so you can fix yours. So th that didn't happen. But uh, I don't mind going down there. Just somebody's got to cover the time. I went down there the other day, and four people needed parts, so I split up the cost of the gas and the time by four. So that, that was helpful for them. Instead of paying 250 bucks for a $30 part, they spent 50 bucks for a $30 part on top of that, so they spent 80 It's a part you can't get no more. So, I mean, even at paying 80 bucks for it, it's cheaper than getting it at the dealer and surely uh, cheaper than some of these people that charge for parts that you can't get no more, man. I see them 120 150 bucks for something that I would normally sell for $30, $40. So there's that. I hope you all are having a great day and about to have a great weekend because the weekend is coming up fast. So I'm going to get out of here. I got to make a couple of stops, run a couple of errands, and then I got to replace the evaporator in lemonade so that uh, we have ac in that car that thing is leaking out two cans a day and you know at 20 bucks a day it's just not worth driving it so we're going to go ahead and fix it so that's what's going on i hope you all are having a great day and if you need me go ahead and send a message i've been making a lot of youtube shorts answering questions which feeds those questions and answers to other people as well Helps people learn a little more in a short fashion. So they'll learn my opinion in a minute versus having to fish through a video and watch a 10, 15 minute video just to pull some information out of it. So I hope that's useful for you guys. So if you're not seeing the shorts, uh, search them. I call them hashtag Ask Robert DIY. So if you search hashtag Ask Robert DIY, and any platform uh, like YouTube or Google or something like that, you'll likely pop up with my shorts. Watch them, enjoy them, and I appreciate you sharing them. I appreciate your support. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's clips.
Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Back at it, about to change the seals in this VVT hub and get that cracking. That's where that mark is right now. And we'll put that mark back there. So turn back, it's all the way back there. Turn forward, it's there. Now when you don't have this system connected with your tune, it's not necessary. It'll just lock itself like that and fly on. So that's what we're gonna do. You can see that somebody's adjusted this timing on this thing. So we could correct this, but it's really not necessary. Not on a car that's not gonna have a VVT tune. I stand corrected. We are doing VVT tune and VVT harness. So we're gonna try to center this so we can have an adjustment in our timing when we move on. So we'll keep that in mind. This cam seal is very dry, so I doubt that one was leaking. Don't know if it had ever been serviced before, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it since we're here. Got this hub one in time center, so we can have some adjustment room if necessary. And we're pulling this crank pulley because we have a seal for that. Got a puller on it. There we go. Got that crank seal installed. Pull that tool out and we are good to go. Time to put that pulley back on. And here's a good view of the crank marks cut into the crank gear there. Those two little notches. And again, they are equal with this piece right here of the crank pulley. We got the block cleaned off. Easy with the cover and stuff off. We got the cover glued back together and on, secure. Got the idler on. Water pump gasket in place. Gonna bolt the water pump on and keep moving forward. Might have been nice to do a live video of this, but I put something under there to hold the belt against the crank pulley. I came up here, pulled it tight, tight across there, tight across here, down under the water pump. It was hanging halfway off the water pump. Then I was able to move the tension over to get it up over there. So the timing belt is on. I need to put this crank bolt on because I don't want that pulley walking around. And I can put the cover up there to verify that my marks is where they need to be for my cover. We're going to pull the cam locking tool off and roll the timing over. Roll the timing over a few times. Timing marks lined back up. Tension stayed where it needed to be, so we are good to go. We're ready to fire this engine up. Well, maybe not. Got some other stuff to do. We get the drill bit in from Amazon, 11 millimeter in step that hole in so we could get this disc in there to sit all the way on the back of the cam and it's done we're going to clean it out got that sensor pickup on got that plug in there got a cam seal replaced behind that we are cooking with grease next up oil cooler we got a new oil cooler seals and hoses getting ready to wire wheel some of this stuff just to clean the old crud off of it so it's good to use your safety glasses all right so we got the oil cooler on when i snug that oil cooler down i didn't realize that this line here was closer to the engine block and the oil cooler was pressed up against it so i gotta watch that when you're doing that next we're gonna get the brackets back on so we can Lift the engine up, set it down on something so we could deal with the rear main seal and clean this thing up so it could be ready for the transmission mount. I just noticed that our wastegate actuator cannot be adjusted properly because there's no tension on it keeping it closed. So we need to 
take this thing, crack this loose, turn this two full revolutions, and then drop it down on the wastegate actuator. Let me go ahead and adjust this while I'm thinking about it. This wastegate actuator falls right down on there at the setting it has right now. So I'm gonna turn this in two times. One, two, and that'll leave it looking like that. Let me put some light on it. And sometimes it's good to check with your tuner, see if there's a preset. So there it is at two turns. Your tuner may have a different preset for it. It may be three, three and a half. We have the transmission open. The bolts are out. And we're about to drop in a quay, folks. There you are. The buildup on the magnet that's in there. We got the quaif installed, torqued down. We're cleaning up the surface around it so we can make it back together and put it together. When I pulled the transmission apart, this piece here actually came out of the transmission and I had to maneuver that around to get that back in. Maybe next time I pop a transmission open, I'll show you guys that. That was a little scary. We got the quaif in, the gearing set up. We're gonna check it for debris and make this thing together. When I return tomorrow, so we're going to tap out for tonight and pick up tomorrow close to noon. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.